All right, I'll just I'll just start reading. I actually have not uh, read all of this before. I've read bits and pieces. Have you? Of course you have. Well, I, I've read I've read I've read Ted. Um, I mean, I've read Ted. I've read, I I got really deep into like a lot of uh, exceptionally right wing semi anarchists, especially during this era, mm -hmm. where you started seeing sort of that reactionary bent of everything. Uh, and again, it's it's like I wrote in chat. Uh, to, Ted's not great. Like this is not like oh look at this is some really good left wing theory. It's actually very much more in line with like the Batais shit we were talking about, where it's like, uh, how do fascists show up? How do they appear? When do they appear? And how do we sort of have those conversations with them? And that's the part that I find most interesting when it comes to Ted, especially because he's clearly intelligent. He's also uh, completely fucking disconnected from any semblance of reality. Yeah, which is you know that's fine. But uh, he hits on a lot of notes that I think. Well, until until you're bombing psychology professors, but yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's until you hit those notes that uh, I'll tell you I feel very much uh, emotionally in line with, and I'm not alone on that. Like, yeah. I think a lot of people emotionally will get some of the shit he's talking about for sure. Well, there's um, a reason it's still talked about. There there are a lot of manifestos from. Oh yeah. Crazy murderers out there. Um, he's the best. I praise. <laughs> okay, well, let's. Yes, uh, and if you haven't seen uh, the the set, the satire of them that was done by uh, your pretty face is going to hell, uh, where it's pretty it's pretty phenomenal too. Just mentioning. I'll give that a look. Your pretty, episode, your pretty face is going. I actually haven't heard of that show. It's uh, from it's 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 a good, good comedy. I like it. All right, let's jump in. All I'm right, gonna, I'm going to change the title quickly. Unabomber Manifesto. There we go. All right. <clears throat> the Industrial Revolution and its consequences have been a disaster for the human race. They have greatly increased the life expectancy of those of us who live in advanced countries, quote-unquote, but they have destabilized society, have made life unfulfilling, have subjected human beings to indignities, have led to widespread psychological suffering in the third world to physical suffering as well. I find that line sort of intrinsically bizarre. And have inflicted severe damage on the natural world. The continued development of technology will worsen the situation. It will worse. It will certainly subject human beings to greater indignities and inflict greater damage on the natural world. It will probably lead to greater uh, social disruption and psychological suffering, and it may lead to increased physical suffering, even in quote-unquote advanced countries. Two, the industrial technological system may survive or it may break down. If it survives, it may eventually achieve a low level of physical and psychological suffering but only after passing through a long and very painful period of adjustment and only at the cost of permanently reducing human beings and many other living organisms to engineered products and mere cogs in the social machine. Furthermore, if the system survives, the consequences will be inevitable. There is no way of reforming or modifying the system so as to prevent it from depriving people of dig dignity and autonomy. Three. If the system breaks down, the consequences will still be very painful, but the bigger the system grows, the more disastrous the results of its breakdown will be. So, if it is to break down, it had best break down sooner rather than later. You know what this reads like to me? This is like the, the Apple TV version of Harry Seldon from Foundation. That's kind of the tone here. Like, there's there's um, there are parodies of, of Marxists and people in the sphere of making sort of grandiose, hyper-particular historical predictions. This is an example of of that. Um, we therefore, I I, I can yeah. agree with that. I, yeah. It's one of the fascinating things about yeah, yeah. is, like again, like nothing he's writing here is necessarily wrong. No, no, right? it's not. It's like, not insane. Like there, there are weird little bits where it's like, did you need that? Like, like additions. Like probably, maybe it's like, well, no. Judging by what you've just written, that's sort of a necessary. I, I, all, I do like, I do yeah. like the caps too. It may eventually. <laughs> Um, you know what it reminds me of? Fantastic. He's it, pretty fantastic. Like it reminds me of uh, a little bit of spirit science, when it's like, you know, I, 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 you won't oh, get oh my that. god, I haven't thought of that channel in a very long time. But like I, it, the secrets I of mean, the moon one, where it's like, uh, and and on on uh, when the full moon's up, uh, that's why we see an increase in incidents of, of violent crimes and probably passionate love. It's like, yeah, it's it's, it's the all yeah. Anyways, pressing on. We therefore advocate a revolution against the industrial system. This, <laughs> this, this, okay. this revolution may or may not make use of violence. 
It may be sudden, or it may be a relatively gradual process, spanning a few decades. <laughs> we, 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 we can't. This is. Do you, do you know who Ray? Do you know who Ray Kurzweil is? I do. Uh, this is like Ray Kurzweil's <laughs> writings and predictions, where it's like, look, we're on the edge of a change that will truly affect. You have no idea the power of AI. It may take 4,000 million years, but AI will become important. It was like, cool, I have no way of knowing if you're accurate, but good job. And it's like, it's like that kind of like, it may take decades. We, we advocate a revolution of slow change, maybe. Is, it's, I love it. <laughs> we, I'm sorry. We can't predict any of that, but we do outline in a very general way the measures that those who hate the industrial system should take in order to prepare the way for a revolution against that form of society. This is not to be a political revolution. No, no. Its object will be to overthrow not governments, but the economic and technological basis of the present society. Now again, just to throw back a little <laughs> yes. bit. Uh, hey, look at the heterogeneous things that are affecting the mm. homogeneous. Allow me to make that statement. I mean, it couldn't be more clear. But we do not want to, yeah. I, we cannot change the government. Good Lord, I would never hurt America. America's wonderful. The governmental system certainly is not completely tied up inside of the economic and technical realities of everything. No, the government will keep that. I like that one. So you, you think this is him softening his message? No, 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 no I think this is, this is the message. He does not soften. Oh, no, no, I, I understand. But like when he says this is not to be a political revolution, it's, it's, kind, of a, it's, it's kind of a baffling No, see, so the short, short, yeah. short version, and again, it's the thing I, I agree with this sentiment, and I might even, you might even catch me saying it. Overthrowing a government is not necessarily a big deal when the systems of production are still in place. Yeah. So I would say it. He would say it as, look, what are you going to do, overthrow the government and then this economy and this technological basis of society will continue? That's what he's saying. So yeah. It's like, it's not a political movement getting the president right. in or anything like that. It's like, no, we have to keep that shit the same, but we have to get rid of this economic and technological machine of capitalism, which he certainly doesn't... I just don't know how on earth, I don't know how on earth he says this revolution may or may not make use of violence. Like he's talking about the total destruction of the way of life of the entire globe. Um, uh, so for him, violence is what he did with pipe bombs. Specifically, like it's not. But he, but uh, he did. But he he did that, right? But he's again <laughs> so, the yeah. the choice of, and he'll talk about this. The choice of violence is not nece It's not nece necessary that everyone do violence. Okay. It's so so the rev. Sorry. Be, so so he's he's sort of treating tomorrow himself. Tomorrow we being... all could. It's not far from like an Islamism where, uh, like Sai Kuda, uh, who founded like the modern Islamist movement. Yeah. A lot of his writings were based around doing shock events that would wake people up. And so, but he didn't say like violence was necessary. He said just this, we need to, we need to wake up the, the, the world of Islam. We yeah. need to wake up global Muslims. And Ted's saying we need to wake people up basically. And he's yeah. doing that same thing where it's like, it doesn't have to be violence. If you can just say, hey, uh, this is bad. Oh, fuck it is. And if everyone listened, happy day, revolution, even though that's. Obviously uh, not how any of that works. So Jemt in chat is saying the problem is Ted has no coherent understanding of things. I don't think this is incoherent. I think like it's 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 in a it's written in a silly key, but it makes sense. I don't I don't think it's I don't think a lot of it makes makes sense practically, but it makes sense. Um, yeah, I, I don't think he's 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 not incoherent in sort of that classical. Um, he's fully not connecting things yeah. together. He, he, I, I think the way he writes, and it's one of the reasons I enjoy it. may it. kind of be the opposite. He might be connecting things a little bit too neatly, almost. Like, it, it, this reminds me a little bit of reading Ayn Rand on government, where she has, like, a, a neat little closed system. Everything fits in together, but it completely misses the point of what she's trying to get at. Uh, see, I come at it, I come at it from, and the, the reason I like Ted is, again, the Bataille thing, but also just to jump a little mm. bit into Deleuze, I'm not going to force you into an AO impromptu reading, but Anti-Oedipus, one of the things Deleuze and, and Guattari go into is how we talk about sort of the, the mental illness of someone who says they are Hamlet, or they are Jesus, or they are Joan of Arc. It's not that 
oh, wow, they're incoherent because yesterday they were Jesus and today they're Joan of Arc. Why don't they see the reason that that makes no sense, which is where we tend to come at it from. Mm -hmm. But instead that a person uh, who claims such a thing is working in the same way you or I work. I claim myself as Brooks or where I'm at or other things because of the intensities that are being produced within me. And these are the tools and words and names I have to call myself. Uh, the same would be true of someone who's calling themselves things. For Ted, we're able to see, I believe, if you look at it very plainly, what his social investments are and where he's actually uh, seeing himself and seeing things. I think the words are incoherent, but I do not think emotionally or referentially he is incoherent. Yeah, I, I agree with that, just from what I've seen so far. Um, <clears throat> in this article, we give attention to only some of the negative developments that have grown out of the industrial technological system. Other such developments we mention only briefly or ignore altogether. This does not mean that we regard those other developments as unimportant. For practical reasons, we have to confine our discussion to areas that have received insufficient public attention or in which we have something new to say. For example, since there are well-developed environmental and wilderness movements, we have written very little about environmental degradation or the destruction of wild nature, even though we consider these to be highly important. Psychology of modern leftism. Okay. Yes, uh, and again, the words are less important than to see what he's pointing at. Yeah. Okay. It's really interesting. I, I think it's a, I think it's very interesting. Huh. It's, it's, if there is a thing uh, to keep in mind for me when you're reading it is that it's clear he emotionally is on the verge of what could be a good political like thing to invest in. Yeah. But it's also, you're going to start to see where he bends away from that and how, because his things are to me, what the modern conservative movement and alt-right world, it's the same complaints and the same setup. So obviously, of words too. Yeah, obviously, Kaczynski um, was severely mentally ill in addition to all of this. But um, I, I do wonder, like, how much of that do you think is a consequence of just his area of study? Because this is somebody who is approaching material that you, you frankly will just not have addressed at all. If you're lucky, you'll have it addressed in a liberal arts program of some kind. But you're not gonna, you're not going to encounter it in STEM, like ever. And he, this was a, this was a mathematician. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, it's going to like contribute to like the 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 kind of closedness of your analysis. You're you're kind of by yourself in your own head, by alone. Well, I mean, it's it's again, it's it's a question of how those sort of modes of thinking works. The, the nature of science is it utilizes referential elements. You're inside of different spaces of reference, and so you have systems that you can directly point to. You have direct moments. But that's not how thought works. That's not how philosophy works. That's not how thinking works. That's not how everyday life works. And so, yes, there's a there's a point where that sort of stem sort mm -hmm. of ex existence comes in. But I'm I'm always hesitant to call anyone sort of at that point of like clearly mentally ill as yeah. though it's a it's a determining thing because again, uh, he's coherent enough right. that uh, we can very much understand one where he's coming from and two what he's actually interested in. And again. What the things I love, notice how he's, it's a new section, but now we're on point six. I fucking love that. Point six. Almost everyone will agree that we live in a deeply troubled society. One of the most widespread manifestations of the craziness of our world is leftism. So a discussion of the psychology of leftism can serve as an introduction to the discussion of the problems of modern society in general. Seven, but what is leftism? During the first half of the 20th century, leftism could have been practically identified with socialism. Today the movement is fragmented, and it is not clear who can properly be called a leftist. When we speak of leftists in this article, we have in mind mainly socialists, collectivists, politically correct types, feminists, gay and disability activists, animal rights activists, and the like. But not everyone who is associated with one of these movements is a leftist. What we are trying to get at in discussing leftism is not so much a movement or an ideology as a psychological type, or rather a collection of related types. Thus, what we mean by quote-unquote leftism will emerge more clearly in the course of our discussion of leftist psychology. Should we jump ahead and get into that? I'm curious. Should we just keep going? Even so... I, I think it's, this, is not a, this is not a slow read. <laughs> so. Fair. Fair. Even so... Point eight. Our conception of leftism will remain a good deal less clear than we would wish, but there doesn't seem to be any remedy for this. 
All we are trying to do here is indicate in a rough and approximate way the two psychological tendencies that we believe are the main driving force of modern leftism. Has he, has he mentioned two? He hasn't yet. Uh, all we are trying to do... No. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, we by no means claim to be telling the whole truth about leftist psychology. All our discussion is meant to apply to modern leftism only. We leave open the question of the extent to which our discussion could be applied to the leftists of the 19th and early 20th centuries. They didn't exist in the 18th century, apparently. Point apparently nine. Not. The two psychological tendencies that underlie modern leftism we call feelings of inferiority and over socialization. Oh, God damn it. R R Rousseau is just having. just rolling in his grave. Feelings of inferiority are characteristic of modern leftism as a whole, while over socialization is characteristic only of a certain segment of modern leftism. But this segment is highly influential. All right, uh, it's worth taking a moment and All right. putting ourselves in the time period because you okay. kids, uh, you don't know what the 80s and early 90s were really like and the time frame and like what we're talking about when we talk about leftism. He's talking about Reagan. Like he's talking about Reagan's leftism, like very, very specifically. This is not the leftism talking about today. This is yeah. not the Rush Limbaugh bitching about liberals. This is right prior to that. Rush was just getting going. Ted was before. Ted was early in this stuff. He was pre Ruby Ridge. Like this, this was this was early in that shit. So, like the ability for us to have those conversations and talk through it, like what leftism meant, who the people were that we're talking about. It. You're talking about like the Pat Buchanan's of the world, the religious leaders. You're talking about uh, the leftists, uh, sort of pushing themselves up, and the people who claimed the leftists that they were, the Tipper Gores. Uh, in the in the 90s, for example, uh, the Bill Clintons, the Hillary Clintons, the, the leftists were different than what we're talking about now. And so it's a very, uh, it's a very different time. It's worth actually, it would be fun, I think, to see how you guys, because I know you got a bunch of, uh, and when I say you kids, I mean anyone under the age of 35. <laughs> so, because um, anyone who like, sort of grew up in the 2000s instead of the 90s or the 80s, go back and watch some of the political commentary of the time. It's mind blowing when you start seeing how we talked about stuff back then. Very different beast. Uh, shoot me some suggestions, some, some choice examples. That might be fun, actually. Um, feelings of inferior inferiority. Feelings of inferiority. Sorry, I can't even speak. 10. By feelings of inferiority, we mean not only inferiority feelings in the strict sense, but a whole spectrum of related traits. Low self-esteem, feelings of powerlessness, depressive tendencies, defeatism, guilt, self-hatred, etc. We argue that modern leftists tend to have some such feelings, possibly more or less repressed, and that these feelings are decisive in determining the direction of modern leftism. 11. When someone interprets as derogatory almost anything that is said about him, or about groups with whom he identifies, we conclude that he has inferiority feelings or low self-esteem. This tendency is pronounced among minority rights activists, whether or not they belong to the minority uh, groups whose rights they defend. They are hypersensitive about the words used to designate minorities and about anything that is said concerning minorities. Uh, the terms, I'm not going to say that because I uh, was punished for it last time. Oriental, handicapped, or chick for an African, an Asian, or disabled person or a woman originally had no derogatory connotation. Oh, oh. God damn. <laughs> It's it's so. <laughs> I mean, he's like a boomer terrorist. It's so great. Broad bro, bro and chick were merely the feminine equivalents of guy, dude, or fellow. That's all I can think of. When what I up, broads? There's, there's there's a scene in there's a scene in uh, UHF, yeah, the Weird Al movie, where he goes, "Do you like your your man called me a chick." How many times, uh, how many, uh, you're, he said broads don't belong in broadcasting. And he goes, how many times have I told him not to call chicks broads? And because he's, he's the asshole. And yeah. it's like just this insane, like chicks and broads were the f equivalent of hello, fellow. Like, hey, look at, hey, broad, how you doing? Yeah, it's the same thing as saying so, hello. So this it's guy, amazing. It's so this, amazing. this guy is like Hawes if it wasn't an act. Almost. It's a little bit of that. Uh, I mean, he's the boomer. Yeah. Broad and chick were merely the feminine equivalents of guy, dude, or fellow. The negative connotations have been attached to these terms by the activists themselves. 
Okay. <laughs> um, some animal rights activists have gone so far as to reject the word pet and insist on its replacement by animal companion. Leftish anthro left leftish. Is that a typo? Leftish anthropologists go to great lengths to avoid saying anything about primitive peoples that could conceivably be, be interpreted as negative. They want to replace the word primitive by non-literate. They do not. Nowhere no, they in don't. the world has that ever been the case. Could you imagine if they did that? Like, oh yes, let's go study the non-literate people. You almost like, that is you almost insane. you almost can't. The the only people you can really study in that key are are literate in some respect at least, whether whether orally or not. But it's always going to be transmitted into writing anyways. Um, th like at, at that point, you're in, in speculative anthropology. They want to replace the word primitive by non-literate. They seem almost paranoid about anything that might suggest that any primitive culture is inferior to our own. We do not mean to imply that primitive cultures are inferior to ours. <laughs> we merely point out the hypersensitivity of leftish anthropologists. No, it's not a typo. It is leftish. But you're calling them primitive. That's definitionally inferior. That's what that means. Anyways. Twelve. Those who are most sensitive about "Quote unquote politically incorrect terminology are not the average black ghetto dweller, Asian immigrant, abused woman, or disabled person, but a minority of activists, many of you, many of whom do not even belong to any oppressed group, quote unquote, but come from privileged strata of society." Oh, <laughs> oh I'm so glad we're doing this. Um, it, this is this is a. Uh... Well, the language is hilarious. Yes. When you see Ben Shapiro or Tucker Carlson talk about the elites, yes, this this paragraph is actually what they're saying. They're there. This is how they do that conversation. They're like, look, the the poor, the impoverished, the actual people who are in this. It, the reality is, they're not the activists. These these are this is white leftist liberal Hollywood. Like it's that same thing. It's saying. The people who care about this stuff are, are wealthy pieces of shit. And it's like, again, none of us like wealthy pieces of shit. So, yeah. Eh? yeah. Or uh, my, my, my favorite one. Ending. I my love favorite that ending. You, you, oh. My favorite one recently was uh, Brianna Wu saying that the only people who care about um, like non binary identities are cis people. Was, oh, God. I, you I hate it. you for streaming all of that shit, by the way. I oh. fucking hate you for that one. I can't even tell I'm you. Like, sorry. I, you thought I was pissed about the Bioshock review you fucking did. This was fucking. This was like a war crime. This was a war crime making me watch that shit. It, it was a war crime. It hurt me more than it hurt you. I promise. Not possible. You, you'd be amazed. I, I learned. I learned new depths of, of agony tonight. Okay, thirteen. Many leftists have an intense identification with the problems of groups that have an image of being weak. Women. <laughs> Def <laughs> defeated no, no, no. It, read it read it like read it really well like, this okay is like, okay many leftists no, no, have an intense identification with the problems of groups that have an image of being weak women <laughs> defeated american indians repellent homosexuals <laughs> or otherwise inferior oh my god <laughs> i i love see i i like ted because it's um there's a you go to the south and you meet racists who are just straight up racist like they're not yeah like like if, if around here or if you go to like people have racist tendencies and they kind of hide them or they, they couch them in things but there's like a racism that's like just out and about they're like yeah i, just, I don't i don't like the blacks and it's like oh well yeah okay like i i think you're an asshole but good for you for being so honest about no, it no they they talk not, like uh they talk like elder scrolls characters and that's kind of what Ted does. Ted's yeah. just there. He's just doing the thing, saying the thing. Huh. Right? Like he's not <clears throat> hiding. He's not mincing words, I guess would be the word I'd wait for. Go ahead. The, the leftists themselves feel that these groups are inferior. They would never admit to themselves that they have such feelings, but it is precisely because they do see these groups as inferior that they identify with their problems. We do not mean to suggest that women, Indians, etc., are inferior. We are only making a point about leftist psychology. 14. Feminists, <laughs> feminists are desperately anxious to prove that women are as strong and as capable as men. 
Clearly, they are nagged by a fear that women may not be as strong and as capable as men. Fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> Leftists tend to hate anything that has... This guy would be working for Google in present day. And this would be... This, this would be like a... He'd be talking like this on Tucker Carlson before everything went down. Leftists tend to hate anything that has an image of being strong, good, and successful. They hate America. They hate Western civilization. They hate white males. They hate rationality. The reasons that leftists give for hating the West, etc., clearly do not correspond with their real motives. They say they hate the West because it is warlike, imperialistic, sexist, ethnocentric, and so forth. But where the same faults appear in socialist countries or in primitive cultures, the leftist finds excuses for them. Or at best, he grudgingly admits that they exist, whereas he enthusiastically points out, and often greatly exaggerates, these faults where they appear in Western civilization. This is actually uh, frequently true, unfortunately. No, no, this is, it's, yeah. again, it's, 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 yeah. he's, he's not wrong. No, it's, he's not. Th this is, uh, I mean, the entirety of the left who support, say, Russia and China yeah. as being socialist right now. Or at the time, uh, especially at the time, God, could you imagine in the 80s and 90s, uh, during, like, you know, the fall of Russia and everything that Yeltsin did and the fucking bombing of the parliament in order to become a dictator? Yeah. I'm still going, yes, I support Russia and the communism. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. He's, 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 he's talking about Chomsky. He's not talking about us, chat. Um, <laughs> yeah. He's talking about some of you. He's talking about some of you. Well, in my audience, probably not. Um in, in, in Haas's audience, almost certainly, in, um, like, Jackson Hinkle, those types, absolutely. Maybe a little bit in, like, kind of the, uh, I don't know if the Soul Bunny, Jesse Gender people go, go after, oh, you, go, you go in support of them, Russia, but, yeah. Hassan Piker, so sorry for anyone who's a mutual watcher of that. Uh, he hates America, he hates America, and the West because they are strong and successful. Yes. So, by the way, any, any women leftists in the chat, you're off the hook. Um, well, that's because they're weak. Exactly. 16, words like self-confidence. That's, uh, that's clipped now forever. Well done. Thank you for that. God damn it. <laughs> that's that's now immortalized. It. Words like self-confidence. I mean, uh, there, it'll help me. Like, there's, an, there's a massive audience out there who will think I'm super based for saying that. Words like self-confidence, self-reliance, initiative, enterprise, optimism, etc. play little role in the liberal and leftist vocabulary. Really? The leftist is anti-individualistic, pro-collectivist. He wants society to solve everyone's problems for them, satisfy everyone's needs for them, take care of them. He is not the sort of person who has an inner sense of confidence in his ability to solve his own problems and satisfy his own needs. The leftist is antagonistic to the concept of competition because deep inside he feels like a loser. 17. Art forms that appeal to modern leftish intellectuals tend to f art art forms sorry art forms got it got it. okay sorry i was reading that as a as a like a verb art forms that appeal to modern leftish intellectuals tend to focus on sordidness defeat and despair or else they take an orgiastic tone throwing off rational control as if there were no hope of accomplishing anything through rational calculation and all that was left was to immerse oneself in the sensations of the moment this person has never uh, seen the, the intensely pornographic nature of virtually all Renaissance paintings of ancient Greeks. 18. Modern leftish philosophers. What, what does he mean by leftish? What is, what he, says, he says leftist and leftish. What are leftishes? Um, so, when we talk about like left, leftist people, he doesn't want to just go for people who claim to be leftist or people who self-proclaim. To him, leftish are people who are, uh, uh, you might say, uh, infected. Pinkos. The, uh, no, just people who are infected okay. by the left. They're leftish. They're not leftist because they don't espouse, in his words, like Marxism and women deserve to be in power or whatever the fuck he's saying. It's they're leftish philosophers, leftish uh, uh, academics is where he tends to use it if memory serves. So it's like. Uh, Leftish mathematicians, anthrop anthropologists, ethnologists, leftish, leftish. <clears throat> okay, so here's, 
I'm going to make a comparison, and it's unfair because this person's actually entertaining, and he's not a slog. Oh, no. Whatever else, his many, many flaws. There's a Jordan Peterson-ish about this. Just a little bit. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a twang of that. No? I don't know. He hasn't talked about washing his genitals yet. Have you looked at photos of the guy? I don't think he. I don't. I don't think he was big on washing his genitals. Um, they are. They are okay, but it is obvious. Hang on. Wait. Wait. Modern yeah, leftish fair. philosophers tend to dismiss. To be fair, like I think those those photos were taken like when he was about to be admitted into prison. I think he'd been living in the wilderness for years at that point. Um, uh, I... Anywho. Modern leftist philosophers tend to dismiss reason, science, objective reality, and to insist that everything is culturally relative. It is true that one can ask serious questions about the foundation of scientific knowledge and about how, if at all, the concept of, of objective reality can be defined, but it is obvious that modern leftist philosophers are not simply cool-headed logicians systematically analyzing the foundations of knowledge. They are deeply involved emotionally in their attack on truth and reality. They attack these concepts because of their own psychological needs. For one thing, their attack is an outlet for hostility, and to the extent that it is successful, it satisfies the drive for power. More importantly, the leftist, no longer leftish, hates science and rationality because they classify certain beliefs as true, i.e. successful, superior, and other beliefs as false, i.e. failed or inferior. The leftist's feelings of inferiority run so deep that he cannot tolerate any classification of some things as successful or superior, and other things as failed or inferior. This also underlies the rejection by many leftists of the concept of mental illness and of the utility of IQ tests. This is an interesting decision by him. Leftists are antagonistic to genetic explanations of human abilities or behavior because such explanations tend to make some persons appear superior or inferior to others. Leftists prefer to give society the credit or blame for an individual's ability or lack of it. This is true, and they are right to do so. Thus, if a person is inferior, quote-unquote, it is not his fault, but society's, because he has not been brought up properly. That's also true with a bunch of asterisks. <laughs> um, 19. The leftist is... I'm kind of... I'm surprised by the... the sort of implicit faith in... you know, me mental health categorizations and IQ testing, given, like, everything else they said prior to this, and given... like... I, I haven't read much about this guy, but, like, this is a person who would have made an impression on his acquaintances when he was in society, right? Like, this is a person who would have been told. I'm not sure that's the case. No? You think he probably no, was, No, like, he's... He, I mean, the reason to... Again, the reason he was captured... Someone this angry? Go so on, I'm he, sorry. The reason he was captured is because uh, his brother recognized how he wrote. He hadn't read anything from his brother in like 20 years. Mm. So we're not talking about someone who like snapped one day. We're talking about someone who, oh, this was, he was not, I would probably not a social person. Probably yeah. not someone who was able to deal a lot with other people. But I mean, like um, he, he was, he was like a, a mathematician. Like he was a PhD, wasn't he? Um, yeah. Yeah. So he, he would have, you know, in the course of that, anyway, anyways, <clears throat> I, I've, my, my, I'm speculating, but it's like, my uncle's got a double PhD. He ain't a social person and he's horrified. Like the, the, this eh, is not fair. a, this is a, not a field where it's like, Hey, you get along with people a lot. No, but there's going to be heavy pathologization of antisocial behaviors or, or, or especially in a university setting of being angry in the sense that in the, in the kind of way that he is. And like, like for me, like I, I had difficulty for, for that reason, getting along with a lot of people in university. Um, but I digress. 19. The leftist is not typically the kind of person whose feelings of inferiority make him a braggart, an egotist, a bully, a self-promoter, a ruthless competitor. This kind of person has not wholly... I don't know if that's true, actually, but I'm, I'm probably biased because the leftists that I encounter are like media people. Um, this kind of person has not wholly lost faith in himself. He has a deficit in his sense of power and self-worth, but he can still conceive of himself as having the capacity to be strong, and his efforts to make himself strong produce his unpleasant behavior. But the leftist is too far gone for that. His feelings of inferiority are so ingrained that he cannot conceive of himself as, an, as individually strong and valuable. 
Hence the collectivism of the leftist, he can feel strong only as a member of a large organization or a mass movement with which he identifies himself. Um, I think, I think, I, I, I see the point here. Um, he's overgeneralizing, but he's not, he's not wrong. Like, you do see that. Um, there's, there's kind of a, it's like a, I'm using this word very caringly, like a kind of Caesarism in, in like right-wing spaces, say, where there's, there's like a tendency for people to kind of do brave heart speeches constantly. You don't really see that so much in leftist spaces. There's a lot more mutual deference, I notice. Certainly, um, when you're talking about, uh, specifically white leftists in media who are trying to like sort of navigate the space and they're doing so in a very tasteless way, let's say. I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant again. Yeah. Uh, if a lot Please. of the times he's taught this time period he's talking about is pre us, like yeah. generally speaking, but, uh, Again, I'm not necessarily sure much of what he's doing is going to do more than generally sort of recommunicate the words of the time that was being used for how people were talking. He himself is a deeply troubled person that dealt with um, a sort of self-hatred um, uh, in, in really, really, really complicated ways. And his rage really came out early on when he was... Um, if, if memory serves, um, uh, as he started sort of coming to grips with his own sexual desires and how he saw himself. Like there's huh. a, there's a lot with that. And a lot of his rage came from this sort of, uh, the supportive system that encouraged him to go down the path. I'm being very... I'm being cagey about this for a good reason. Yeah, yeah. This is like really complex and there's not a ton that's like aside from Ted's own words on it. So it's hard to say exactly what was going on, but he, he had a lot of complexity around why he wrote this. That does come from a, a deep social repression of the normative and the homogenous deeply inside of how he existed. It's interesting. Um, like, so I'm reading a thing on the side while you're while you're speaking. I'm I'm trying to find something on this. Okay. Huh. Hey, I'll I'll will send you a link. But yeah, that'd be that'd be helpful for uh, next time. We're not going to get through all this tonight. Oh, um, we, we won't. No, this, um, I I was I was surprised how long this actually was. This is like, oh my god. Um, like it's not it's not crazy long as far as like writings go, but it's too long for one read through tonight. Definitely. Um. All right. <clears throat> Just when you get a chance, that link would be maybe useful to take a look at. I'll take a look at that after, yeah. 20. Uh, shall we go to 40? I think 40 is probably a safe goal. No, I don't care. Okay. Don't care. Um, I'll, I'll set the goal for 40 if I feel like I can continue after that and we're like at a reasonable time limit for what's been paid for. I'll, I'll press on. Notice I'm just the... killing everyone on board every space station I come to. So <laughs> kind of, I'm easy. Notice the masochistic tendency of leftist tactics. Leftists protest by lying down in front of vehicles. They intentionally provoke police or racists to abuse them, etc. These tactics may often be effective, but many leftists use them not as a means to an end, but because they prefer masochistic tactics. I, Self-hatred is a leftist tactic. Boy, yeah. I can't, I, projection is a thing, I think, somewhere. Leftists may claim, well, it's, it's, it's funny, because I, I was watching a video last night, um, which I'm not entirely sure I agree with, I have to like, look at its sources, but it's talking about, there's a, it's conjecturing about a dogmatic tendency to prefer particular kinds of unproductive disruption of traffic and things like that, as the primary means, like the, uh, the stop oil campaign, where it seems like the disruption of traffic sort of overshadowed the message, and the message never even got out, things like that, and there was like a weird kind of salesmanship to the representatives of, of that movement when they were like on uh, on TV sort of explaining what it is they hope to achieve, what the what the strategy was, da, 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 da. I can see how you could interpret it that way, but I wouldn't characterize it as masochism. I would, that's that's more like, a, like an idealistic thing. Leftists may claim that their activism is motivated by compassion or by moral principles, and moral principle does play a role for the leftist of the over-socialized type. But compassion and moral principle cannot be the main motives for leftist activism. Hostility is too prominent a component of leftist behavior, so is the drive for power. 
Moreover, much leftist behavior is not rationally calculated to be of benefit to the people whom the leftists claim to be trying to help. For example, if one believes that affirmative action is good for black people, does it make sense to demand affirmative action in hostile or dogmatic terms? Obviously, it would be more productive to take a diplomatic and conciliatory approach that would make at least verbal and symbolic concessions to white people who think that affirmative action discriminates against them. I'll call him uh, Ted Kowitzki next. Um, but leftist activists do not take such an approach because it would not satisfy their emotional needs. Helping black people is not their real goal. Instead, race problems serve as an excuse for them to express their own hostility and frustrated need for power. In doing so, they actually harm black people because the activist's hostile attitude toward the mi white majority tends to intensify race hatred. There is a germ of something in here that you have to be very, very careful while handling that isn't necessarily untrue. There is uh, a strong tendency of sort of appropriation of these things as sort of a vent for individual um, power tripping over other people. Da, 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 da. But like this is once again a categorical statement about too much. A lot. A, a lot. lot. If our society had no social problems at all, the leftists would have to invent problems in order to provide themselves with an excuse for making a fuss. I mean, that's... That, that's true if they needed to make a fuss, I guess. We emphasize that the foregoing does not pretend to be an accurate description of everyone who might be considered a leftist. Oh, thank you, Ted. It is only a rough indication of a general tendency of leftism. All right, this is what I'm interested in. Over-socialization. 24. Psychologists use the term socialization to des designate the process by which children are trained to think and act as society demands. A person is said to be well socialized if he believes in and obeys the moral code of his society and fits in well as a functioning part of that society. It may seem senseless to say that many leftists are over socialized, no quotes I notice, since the leftist is perceived as a rebel. Nevertheless, the position can be defended. Many leftists are not such rebels as they seem. 25. The moral code of our society is so demanding that no one can think, feel, and act in a completely moral way. That's true. For example, we are not supposed to hate anyone, yet almost everyone hates somebody at some time or other. Whether he admits it to himself or not. Mm. Some people are so highly socialized, the attempt to think feel and act morally imposes a severe burden on them. In order to avoid feelings of guilt, they continually have to deceive themselves about their own motives and find moral explanations for feelings and actions that in reality have a non-moral origin. We use the term over-socialized, quote-unquote, to describe such people. 26. Over-socialization can lead to low self-esteem, a sense of powerlessness, defeatism, guilt, etc. One of the most important means by which our society uh, socializes children is by making them feel ashamed of behavior or speech that is contrary to society's expectations. If this is overdone, or if a particular child is especially susceptible to such feelings, he ends by feeling ashamed of himself. Moreover, the thought and the behavior of the over-socialized person are more restricted by society's expectations than are those of the lightly socialized person. The majority of people engage in a significant amount of naughty behavior. <laughs> they lie, they commit petty thefts, they break traffic laws, they goof off at work, they hate someone, they say spiteful things, or they use some underhanded trick to get ahead of the other guy. The over-socialized person cannot do these things, or if he does do them, he generates in himself a sense of shame and self-hatred. The over-socialized person cannot even experience without guilt thoughts or feelings that are contrary to the accepted morality. He cannot think unclean, quote-unquote, thoughts, and socialization is not just a matter of morality. We are socialized to conform to many norms of behavior that do not fall under the heading of morality. Thus, this, the over-socialized person is kept on a psychological leash and spends his life running on rails that society has laid down for him. In many over-socialized people, this results in a sense of constraint and powerlessness that can be a severe hardship. We suggest that over-socialization is one of the more is among the more serious cruelties that human beings inflict on one another. All right. This yeah. is actually worth taking a moment yeah. on. So uh, the shit I was being cagey about earlier, um, Ted Kaczynski uh, felt himself a woman 
and went for gender reassignment surgery and was turned down by a doctor. Really? And, and yes. And uh, I sent you the link. This is the story. This is it's 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 just one of the we don't have a lot of like because Ted obviously didn't like write about a lot of shit that would be would make him look bad because yeah. we kind of get that view. But there is stuff that we know about a handful of things. And he, if you want to talk about someone who is, like, projecting the hardest they can during this, it's, it's him. This sort of, um, hey, uh, I, I am ashamed of how I felt. I'm ashamed of the sexuality I was feeling. I'm ashamed of blah, blah, blah. It's wild. It's so it wild. looks like, so, so, okay, so this is interesting. So, convicted Unabomber Theodor Kaczynski considered having a sex change operation when he was in his 20s, and confusion over his gender identity filled him with a rage that contributed to his bombing spree, according to documents released today. Did that develop any further, like, in terms of, like, how he, how it was not a Kaczynski self-conceived? No, no, but, yeah, like, I mean, what, what I'm saying, though, is, like, I want to be very careful here. Is oh, yeah. is is Ted Kaczynski a, a she or did Ted Kaczynski change between his twenties uh, and between later on? Because the, what I'm noticing about the writing here, for example, like Ted Kaczynski has a very combative, very um, like he 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 sounds like a a, a, a very like there's like a, a for for someone to write this and to privilege males as the non weaker part of the species as like the protagonist because he only refers to he, um, th that's a strange thing for somebody who is doing the 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 action of a mover and a pusher kind of. You know what I mean? The the, the quote would be um, after he decided not to go through with it. And again, we don't know right. what the reason is. We know it was after he met with a counselor, and I'm sure. I'm sure in the 1960s it was a supportive counselor, right? No, of course not. Like, God damn it. Can you imagine, like, the 1960s going through Yeah, that? yeah. Um, as I, to quote Ted, as I walked away from the building afterwards, I felt disgusted about what my uncontrolled sexual cravings had almost led me to do, and I felt humiliated, and I violently hated the psychiatrist. Just then there came a major turning point in my life. Like a phoenix, I burst from the ashes of my despair to a glorious new hope. And his hope was... Killing a bunch of people. Huh. But I don't mean that in like a yeah, yeah no. uh, jokey way. Like no, no. literally that's what he wrote in his yeah. journal. Like he was going to turn on these people. So when we talk about the over-socialized, we talk about the people who the social world has uh, made it so they can't stamp outside of the normal boundaries. Um, not that I want to keep going back to Bataille, but let's talk about Ted Kaczynski, who absolutely is clearly, it, let's, in his world and how he's using it, he's one of those people. He's a person who decided that gendered normal norms, despite every feeling he had driving him the other way, the intense self-hatred he then fell back on himself with. It's extraordinary. Uh, that I, I can't again. I can't even imagine the level at this time frame. Yeah. Now he looks at other people and he's like, "Oh, see, I was strong enough to be who I really am. I promise, I'm. I'm really a man. I'm really a man. I'm really a man. I'm really, like that kind of thing. Yeah. Boy, if you only could be who you really are. If only you had the kind of will to power that I'm talking about. And that's what this paragraph's about. Huh. More the moreover, the thought and the behavior of over socialized person are restricted." by society's expectations than those of a lightly socialized person. Like, Jesus Christ. Uh, thank you, Braidrain, for the $10 beers. I may grab an anchor steam in solidarity. I'm going to do that. Thank you. It's wild, right? Yeah, this got really depressing. Um, we well, are... I mean, it should be. Yeah. <laughs> it should be. This is... This is... This is one of those amazing cases. Uh, this was before we had rage killers and before we had terrorism at this level in the United States. I mean, he was doing this very early. This wasn't, again, he didn't blow up one person in like the 90s. This was like a 25-year thing. This was yeah. a long-running thing. Oh, he blew up a lot of people. He only successfully killed three, but it was, it was a lot. Yeah. Yeah. 
And the the people he didn't kill, like they weren't they weren't unscarred. Um, oh no. Twenty seven. We argue that a very important influential segment of the modern left is over socialized, and that their over socialization is of great importance in determining the direction of modern leftism. Leftists of the over socialized type tend to be intellectuals or members of the upper middle class. Notice that university intellectuals constitute the most highly socialized segment of our society and also the most left-wing segment. 28. The leftist of the over-socialized type tries to get off of his psychological leash and assert his autonomy by rebelling, but usually he is not strong enough to rebel against the most basic values of society. Generally speaking, the goals of today's leftists are not in conflict with the accepted morality. On the contrary, the left takes an accepted moral principle, adopts it as its own, and then accuses mainstream society of violating that principle. That's not incorrect, actually. Examples, racial equality, equality of the sexes, helping poor people, peace as opposed to war, nonviolence generally, freedom of expression, kindness to animals, as soon as that cetera is supposed to be in there. More fundamentally, the duty of the individual to serve society and the duty of society to take care of the individual. All of these have been deeply rooted values of our society, or at least of its middle and upper classes, for a long time. These values are explicitly or implicitly expressed or presupposed in most of the material presented to us by the mainstream communications media. It is noteworthy that one of his targets was a uh, representative of a communications company. Um, and the educational system. Leftists, especially those of the over-socialized type, usually do not rebel against these principles, but justify their hostility to society by claiming with some degree of truth that society is not living up to these principles. 29. Uh, here is an illustration of the way in which the over-socialized... Uh, it's, it's funny, actually, because I'm, I'm, I'm reading this section here. And... Mm -hmm. This is basically uh, precisely Marx's critique of Hegel. Um, yes. Yeah, the, the, the state pretends to be the representative and sort of the nexus of, of the identities and the consciousness of a community, but in fact it only identifies as universal above it all by being above it all and sort of stamping over top of it. So there's, that's, when Marx talks about like contradictions, for anyone who's found that language confusing, because people use that sort of in a blasé way, where it, they'll just talk about the contradictions in capitalism as if it's clear what that means. That's typically what it's talking about. It's talking about literal contradictions in terms of the, the avowed aims or purposes of things and what they actually do. Um, no, but again, it, yeah. he's not he's not talking about the left. Mm -hmm. Like this is, it's it's one of the no no sorry things. that was just that was just a comparison. No 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 I no no I know, but it's yeah. uh, I'm more I'm more also sort of saying that to the chat as well because uh, again the words he's using it's him pulling from the depths of his brain to sort of cover up and give excuse or give voice to the the emotions and the affects that are sort of coming through him as he's writing this the the entirety of that section he is he's clever enough to be able to see things that are wrong and actually state them quite often like again that it's not a it's not about stating the problems it's about saying where we can fix things which he uh will just say kind of gets wrong a little bit um but it's a lot of this comes from uh and it's not even directed at the left he's not even talking about the left he's talking about the oppressive forces within society and he's very much again giving rise to um i go back to that but piece what is the homogenous and the heterogeneous and how do they operate and he's making that critique he's coming at that same space he just, he's unaware of it and he's doing it in the worst possible way but he's he's very much showing what bataille was talking about how the fascist operates and if you want I, i'm happy to take a paragraph or two by the way because i know you, you can just I, i'm actually i'm actually not doing too badly right now like fortunately yeah. the, i was just thinking about this just the grand irony of the whole thing i make more money than wick watching wick's streams having people pay me to turn him off than wick does it's like if Wick if Wick had a meter to turn Wick off, he'd make more money than you. He, would, he might actually, um, but uh, no, I, I can I can keep going. Um, I'll tell you what, when we hit forty, uh, I'll I'll let you I'll let you take over for a little bit, and then we'll see how far we want to go. Because we've been going for how long? We've been going. Because we'll we'll probably return to this. This is this is actually fun. It's one of the few ones that's actually been fun. They've all been interesting, but this one's fun. Um, 29. 
Here is an illustration of the way in which the over-socialized leftist shows his real attachment to the conventional attitudes of our society. Uh, while pretending to be in rebellion against it, many leftists push for affirmative action, for moving black people into high prestige jobs, for improved education in black schools, and more money for such schools. The way of life of the black underclass, quote-unquote, they regard as a social disgrace. They want to integrate the black man into the system, make him a business executive, a lawyer, a scientist, just like upper middle class white people. The leftists will reply that the last thing they want is to make the black man into a copy of the white man. Instead, they want to preserve African American culture. But in what does this preservation of African American culture consist? This is actually a decent point. This is actually you Fanon could have written really this. Really fucking good point. Fanon could really have written this. Point. It can hardly consist in anything more than eating black style food, listening to black style music, and in fact, that's literally like on the Jewish question by Marx. What he's talking about there, uh, listening to black style music, wearing black style clothing, and going to a black style church or mosque. In other words, it can express only, it can express itself only in superficial matters. In all essential respects. Most leftists of the over-socialized type want to make the black man conform to white middle-class ideals. They want to make him study technical subjects. They uh, become an executive or a scientist, spend his life climbing the status ladder to prove that black people are as good as white. They want to make black fathers quote-unquote responsible. They want black gangs to become non-violent, etc. Here's where the other foot's going to drop. But these are exactly... But real quick, at this, yeah, yeah. Point, yes. at this point, he's talking about Ben Shapiro. Yes. Which is amazing. Yeah. Like, again, it, it, it ignore the words leftist. Who he's rallying at yeah. is the power structure, is, is the, those elements. And it's yeah. really interesting to see how he talks about them. Some of the, the, the words yeah. here are fantastic. I, I recommend um, There Is No Such Thing as Cultural Identity by Francois Julien that I think really touches into how culture operates and what culture can do. It's really good, too. Te uh, Just as, a, as an aside. DM me the name, uh, the title of that, so I, I find sure. it later. <clears throat> but these are exactly the values of the industrial technological system. The system couldn't care less what kind of music a man listens to, to what kind of clothes he wears, or what religion he believes in as long as he studies in school, holds a respectable job, climbs a status ladder, is a quote-unquote responsible parent, is non-violent, and so forth. In effect, however, much you may deny it, the over-socialized leftist wants to integrate the black man into the system and make him adopt its values. This, is, this, yes. th this section is just true. Um... We certainly do not claim that leftists, even of the over-socialized type, never rebel against the fundamental values of our society. Clearly, they sometimes do. Some over so Actually, uh, just a, a final comment on this top part. This is actually something that I... Um, this actually was, was sort of critical in my um, sort of transformation philosophically. Um, I took a class. It was actually a pretty good one, but I didn't appreciate it at the time. I took a class on indigenous politics at the same time I had just started reading a rent. And... A rent I have issues with. I've I've a rent's a rent's my relationship with a rent is a weird is, is weird. I, I started off being disinterested in a rent, I, I learned to love a rent, and then I learned to hate her again. Um one of the things that, that she touches on, because she she she's she's immensely narrativistic and simplistic, but she she draws on people who are more sophisticated than herself. Um she talks about the particularity of politics as a, a sort of mode of organization and, and life and an ethical system, da, 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 whatever you want for that kind of thing. And one of the things you will notice in a lot of uh, writings on indigenous sovereignty in Canada, for example, there is a very uh, strong push to recharacterize indigenous storytelling as quote unquote indigenous philosophy. And the issue I take with this is not that there isn't indigenous philosophy. It's the, the implicit need to reconstrue something that sort of assumes as, as close as possible with what's sort of given the form in which we receive philosophical writings from like the Greeks or whatever, um, you, you have to call the indigenous stories philosophy or else they don't count somehow. It doesn't matter, for example, if like actual philosophy maybe went into their composition. Maybe actual philosophy sort of was transmitted in other ways, like in the, in the structure of their societies and whatnot, just wasn't written down in, in the way that we would we would like for convenience we can refer to it, stuff like that. It's inferior unless you can say, this is indigenous philosophy. Da, da, da. And what you notice at the end of it, uh, Dale Turner, I think, wrote one book, This Is Not a Peace Pipe, which I was really annoyed by. At the end of it, you have the pushing of an indigenous philosophy, quote unquote, which is literally just, uh, it, it, it's, it's like the dogmatic proselytization of a character sheet. It's, it's, 
it's it's kind someone of someone should make a video of it because this is related to religion and someone should make yeah. a video about how christianity has taken over religion and we utilize the christian version of religion when we do this i know someone, someone should. should write that yeah i'm not smart enough to though so it's not gonna be me no sadly sadly you're really dumb no uh, <clears throat> but i did though click on it yeah uh, that's that, that's the thank joke thank you i know that's the I know. joke i know that's the joke that was why it was funny. But then I just, but it. then I realized I'm, t I would be too dumb no, to get it, you, and so I assumed. Fucking ruined it. You yeah, ruined I did. It. Well done. I did. Well done. Good we'll fix, we'll fix it in the edit, okay? No, you won't. <laughs> no, I won't. Too lazy for that. All right, <laughs> thirty. We certainly do not claim that leftists, even of the over-socialized type, never rebel against. There's our. We're missing those capitals for a second. Oh, there's an essential up here. Never rebel against the fundamental values of our society. Clearly, they sometimes do. Some over-socialized leftists have gone so far as to rebel against one of modern society's most important principles by engaging in physical violence. By their own account, violence is for them a form of liberation, quote-unquote. In other this is this is in quotes. Is there a particular reference here? Is he talking, for example, about like black activists no, he's at universities, just saying or it's is not, this general? No, he's just, he's okay. just saying... It's not liberation. Okay, he's, because this is because that's that's uh that's what like a rent is characterized as, and not unjustly, uh, but but more subtly than maybe some people would would have you believe. A rent on violence is where you'll get the accusations of her being racist, precisely because of her characterization of uh, black activism on university campuses. No, he's just being a shithead. Okay, fair enough. In other words, by committing violence, they break through the psychological restraints that have been trained into them. That's sort of phenomenal. Because they are over socialized, these restraints. Did I say phenomenal. You did. I didn't. wasn't going to copy. I wasn't going to comment. But yeah. Okay. Just disregard that. Okay. Because they're phenomenal. Because they are over so. Because they are over socialized. These restraints have been more. I'm. I'm actually. Yeah, too you're not going to be able to get past that ever. You know. I like, guess this is now. The canonical phenomenal. You're going to have to do a phenomenal stream now. Oh God. I know, it's ruining everything. I didn't do that on purpose. That was, like, automatic. That's what you're saying. Because they are over-socialized, these restraints have been more confining for them than for others. Hence their need to break free of them. But they usually justify... Phenomenal, fuck. Their rebellion in terms of mainstream values. If they engage in violence, they claim to be fighting against racism or the like. 31. We realize that many objections could be raised to the foregoing thumbnail sketch of leftist psychology. The real situation is complex, and anything like a complete description of it would take several volumes, even if the necessary data were available. We claim only to have indicated very roughly the two most important tendencies in the psychology of modern leftism. The problems of the leftists are indicative, indicative of the problems of our society as a whole. Indicative. Indicative. The problems of the leftists are indicative of the problems of our society as a whole. Thank you, Are Brooks. they phenomenal? Low self-esteem, depressive tendencies, and defeatism are not restricted to the left, though they are especially noticeable in the left. Actually, A counterexample of, of a defeatist rightist movement. Like, what would he have in mind? Can you think of anything? He's not. He's not okay. using the same terms you are. Okay. Okay. So don't. He ain't talking about leftism. So let's not talk about defeatist okay. rightist yeah. movements. He's talking about statists. Right. He's talking about statists and the liberal order that pushes the sort of hyper standard normative. Like, it's a leftist. He's not. He's not having a conversation with Marx. He's not here to critique you and me. He is fucked up. And uh, in the same way that you should, when you read these manifestos, you realize his position, realize he's not using the words the same way you do. Fair. We realize that many objections could be raised to the foregoing thumbnail sketch of leftist psychology. The real, oh, I read this already. 32, the problems of the leftist are indicative of the problems of our society as a whole. Low self-esteem, depressive tendencies, and defeatism are not restricted to the left, although they are especially noticeable in the left they are widespread in our society and today's society tries to socialize us to a greater extent than any previous society we are even told by experts how to eat how to exercise how to make love how to raise our kids and so forth the power process human beings have a need probably based in biology 
for something that we will call the power process. This is closely related to the need for power, which is widely recognized, but it's not quite the same thing. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to make a separate channel. I'm going to use a voice modulator and I'm going to try to do like sort of a distributist endeavor, sort of like right wing YouTube thing. I'm not going to attribute it. I'm just going to cut down the Unabomber manifesto into sections. and I'm going to see if I pick up any traction, <laughs> just putting sections of that in. I'm not going to do it, but that'd be, that'd of be, course you will, be because an experiment. Again, the whole point of the fascist and the right wing movement is not rationality or coherence. It is the same thing as it's always been the conversation around feelings. They run by feelings. And so just having a channel that just goes like you could, you don't even have to have much. Like just say clown world, which went huge. Like you don't need Oh God. Of it's one of my, one of my favorite moments is when I finally surpassed that, that, um, settlers lament idiot. Um, just because it was so, it was so enraging. Cause I know how much work I put in my, ch I'm still an idiot, but I, I put so much work into my videos and I'm just watching this guy talk about <sighs> women today have been trained to not understand the virtues of living at home and are miserable as a result. And it's like, just, just kill me. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> this is closely related to the need for power, which is widely recognized, but is not quite the same thing. The power process has four elements. The three most... Do you, do you think he had the four elements first? You think he just said four elements and filled them? The three most clear cut of these we call goal, effort, and attainment of goal. Everyone needs oh, yeah, to. No, he he had this shit ahead of time. Okay. For sure. Everyone <laughs> needs to have goals whose attainment requires effort, and needs to succeed in attaining at least some of his goals. The fourth element is more difficult to define and may not be necessary for everyone. We call it autonomy, and we'll discuss it later. Thirty four. The hypothetical case of a man who can have anything he wants just by wishing for it. Such a man has power, but he will develop serious psychological problems. At first he will have a lot of fun, but by and by he will become acutely bored and demoralized. Eventually he may become clinically depressed. History shows that leisured aristocracies tend to become decadent. This is not true of fighting aristocracies that have to struggle to maintain their power. I'd like to know what his examples are, but leisured, secure aristocracies that have no need to exert themselves usually become bored, hedonistic, and demoralized even though they have power. This shows that power is not enough. One must have goals toward which to exercise one's power. 35. Everyone has goals, if nothing else, to obtain the physical necessities of life. Food, water, and whatever clothing and shelter are made necessary by the climate. But the leisured aristocrat obtains these things without effort, hence his boredom and demoralization. 36. Non-attainment of important goals results in death if the goals are physical necessities and in frustration if non-attainment of the goals is compatible with survival. Consistent failure to attain goals throughout life results in defeatism, low self-esteem, or depression. I, I just want to know, yeah. it's one of the things I love about this, when he talks about goals, at no point up until that moment is he talking about, like, food and shelter. But then he very much is. Yeah. It's, it's such a strange like change for him where it's uh, he's trying to relate back sort of the and he, he'll be doing this later, but it's he's trying to relate back the feeling of like accomplishment, but also realizing that like, oh, yeah, no, people uh, don't have food. And so like that's something they need. Well, to I think I think what he's getting at, like, I think there's a, a, a good analogy is actually the game you're playing right now, because at a certain point. You're going to get powerful enough. Trust me, this is not a good analogy for anything. Okay, fair enough. Well, in Skyrim, at a certain point, you become powerful enough that the game stops being a game. And there's no longer danger in going into a dark tunnel because you can kill literally everything. You, you, have, you have several supermarkets worth of vegetables in your pocket wherever you go. You can pause and just reheal yourself at a moment. And there's like a lack of... Not a lack of meaning per se, but it's like there isn't a significance, there isn't like a benchmark that you've achieved by getting past the thing. It just becomes sort of a blur. It's why open world games generally suck. Um, I think that's, that's... That's the number getting bigger. I mean, that's the issue yeah. with any game where the numbers are actually what fools you into thinking you're gaining skill. I mean, it works for Dark Souls. But it works for almost every game. People are addicted to everything. Cookie clicker worked. That's how it goes. 
Bigger numbers are cool. Were you a cookie clicker uh, player? I mean, most people played it. I, I didn't. How clicker? Myself. I I never played it. I'm just I'm just better than you. Thus, in order to avoid serious psychological yeah. problems, a human being needs goals whose attainment requires effort, and he must have a reasonable rate of success in attaining his goals. I don't disagree with this. I think it's a pretty reasonable, almost obvious statement. <clears throat> what do you think? It's fine. Okay. And so, again, how he talks about goals is what's going to be more interesting because um, when he starts getting to his sort of uh, in individuality, his autonomy sort of play, he's going from this position of goals being the central element. Mm -hmm. um, and I, uh, I, am, I believe goals are anathema to this. And so I think a lot of his approach comes from this idea of uh, the goal being the thing and that things are things. And again, it's, it's almost a beautiful version of the hyper paranoiac out of anti Oedipus. So I, that's why I enjoy this stuff because he is that thing. 38. We're in surrogate activities now, but not every leisured aristocrat becomes bored and demoralized. Do you want to take over this one? But not every leisured aristocrat becomes bored and demoralized. For example, the Emperor Hirohito, instead of sinking into decadent hedonism, devoted himself to marine biology, a field in which he became distinguished. When uh, people so, same with Jotaro Kujo, by the way. Continue, please. That was important to interrupt me. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> when people do not have to exert themselves to satisfy their physical needs, they often set up artificial goals for themselves. In many cases, they then pursue these goals with the same energy and emotional involvement that they would otherwise have to put into the search for physical necessities. Thus, the aristocrats of the Roman Empire had their literary pretensions. Many European aristocrats had few centuries ago invested tremendous time and energy in hunting, though they certainly didn't need the meat. Other aristocracies have competed for status through elaborate displays of wealth, and a few aristocrats like Hirohito have turned to science. We yeah. use the term surrogate activity. He's just doing the thing. He's, he's yeah. talking through, uh, hey, the basis of humanity is we need goals. We have goals. We, have, we are built to do things and to make things struggle. happen. We are built to struggle. And when we don't have the actual struggle, we will find things to struggle over. I just cannot say how much of a bullshit this whole thing is. But it's, again, the words aren't about the coherence. Yeah. The underlying sense of them is entirely coherent. And it's something that I think a lot of people, more people than we want to admit, uh, very much emotionally identify with. I have to run to dinner. This has been lovely, by the way. Thank yeah, you for having let's, me. Uh, let's call it here and let's, let's continue this soon. Because we've been going for a little over an hour now. Um, let's, uh, let's do that. And excellent. Yeah, and we won't requ this won't require a theory stream meter. I don't know when exactly we'll continue with this one, but uh, this will like sort of like with the Bataille one, I'm gonna I'm gonna coalesce those into coalesce coalesce those into one long video, so this will be this will be a thing we'll finish at some point. We're about judging by the meter here, about an eighth of the way through. <laughs> so it's very long. But we'll it, we'll do it, more it of this. It is it it's exceptionally long. I mean yeah. it is incredibly phenomenal. Thank you.